Hey, what's going on guys? Brian from Zombie Guitar here. Uh, this is part three of the chord tone soloing series. Alright, so um, just a quick uh, recap of parts one and two. Part one, we worked in the uh, basic home box pentatonic position um, right up here. Basic pentatonic, I'm sure you know. Um, we're in the key of E minor slash G major, okay? So we're still going to be using the same key for all these um, examples, okay? So in part two, we were in what I call the A string home box. So it's this pentatonic position here. Okay, so that was part two, and we located all our chord tones there. Now part three, um, we are going to be locating our chord tones in what I call, or what I think of in my head as uh, the the E shape of the one chord position. Okay, so uh, we're still using the example in the key of G, G major slash E minor. So the one chord would be the G major chord. Okay, and your G major bar chord or the E shape if you're thinking in, in terms of caged shapes or names is this. Okay, or up here on the 15th fret. Okay, so we're going to be working in this position here and locating all our chord tones for the same chords that we used in parts one and two, which are the C major chord to the G major chord to the D major chord to the E minor chord. Also, you can think of it as the one, four, five, and six chords in the key of G major or E minor, whichever, whichever one you want to think of. Um, so the... Uh, Right in that position, you have your uh, your pentatonic box, right? So the you could call this pentatonic position number two. Okay, we can do that up here. Okay, so you got that pentatonic position. And you can, of course, fill in your diatonic notes as well. All right, so you have your diatonic notes, you have your pentatonic position, but we want to locate the chord tones within this little area right here. And, of course, we can combine chord tones and pentatonic and diatonic and all that stuff, however you feel or see fit. But anyway, um, sorry, I like to ramble a lot. Anyway, the... Um, the C chord, okay, which is the starting chord of the progression, is okay. So that's the C major chord in the A shape, all right. Uh, and then you go to your G major chord in the E shape, okay. And then you have your uh, D major chord in the C shape, okay. So, and then you have your E minor chord. This is an E minor chord in this shape, which is the same shape as a D minor. You're just taking your D minor chord and you're moving it to here. Okay, so your C major to your G major to your D major. To your E minor. Okay, so that is the location of your chord tones. All right. Um, you can also, uh, instead of kind of, since a lot of leads are, are done on the higher four strings, you can just like we went over in parts one and two. You can kind of uh, uh, sh uh, make these chords a little smaller just by using the high four strings. So for the C chord, you might just want to use the E, B, and G strings. Okay, you have your root, you have your third, and you have your fifth. So there's all the available chord turns of your C major. Um, and then you can go for the G major chord. You can do just the high four strings. Okay. Okay, now we have that movement of a fifth. We talked about this in that part two. So you're going from the G major chord to the D major chord, which is the movement of a fifth. So that looks like this. Okay, um, 
So again, you're just on the high four strings for the D major chord. All right, and then uh, what is it? The last chord would be the uh, the E minor chord, and I just use the E G and B string for that chord usually too. Because you have your root here, you have your fifth here, and you have your third here. Okay, so. That's just the location of your chord tones. Um, now, for the musical example part of this, um, instead of using all chord tones like I did in parts one and two, or 99% chord tones, uh, with the exception of some scalar runs to lead from one chord to the next, uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda just mix um, what a lot of people refer to as pentatonic noodling and, uh, and melodic playing by use of just doing generic pentatonic stuff and then switching to melodic chord playing type stuff um, for a certain chord. So in this example, I'm gonna do generic pentatonic licks for the C chord and the G chord, but then once it gets to the D chord, I'm gonna switch it up to melodic type playing, in which case I'm gonna start focusing on chord tones, okay? Um, and then for the E minor chord, you know, I can either do pentatonic stuff or I might focus on chord tones for that as well, all right? But the purpose, the point is, you're gonna notice a distinct difference from um, what I'm doing over the first two chords to what I'm doing once the D chord occurs. So again, the, uh, the progression I'm gonna be soloing over sounds like this. <laughs> So that's the uh, progression. Now I'm gonna start off with just some generic pentatonic stuff and I'm gonna switch as I get to the D chord. So it's gonna sound like this. Okay, so what I was doing there is, just as I explained I was going to do, um, I was doing generic pentatonic noodling stuff for the first two chords, and then once it got to the D major chord, which is the third chord, I kind of switched up my playing style to melodic type playing, all right? So you can do generic pe pentatonic stuff all you want. You can do, uh, you know, fast scalar licks all you want. You can do chord tone strictly chord tone stuff all you want. Uh, you can mix and match the stuff in any way that you want. Um, these are just giving, hopefully giving you some ideas on how you can incorporate this chord tone stuff into your playing. All right, so I like to do a lot of pentatonic noodling stuff, you know, especially when I'm playing live. Um, pentatonic, it's easy, but it looks cool. It sounds like you're really insanely awesome and you're just doing the same thing over and over and over, but it gets the crowd's attention. It's a flashy way of playing. That's why everyone does it, that's why it works. But at some point in your solo, your solo really begins to come to life once you start giving the chords some attention as well. So do your flashy stuff all you want, but then at a certain point you might want to dial it back and start landing on some chord tones, really bring out the melody, really bring out the rhythm section, okay? So that's the purpose of this whole chord tone soloing series. Um, short, shorter lesson today. Um, there's lots more to come in this chord tone soloing series. So, so, so far, I went over these three positions. Um, I'm going to talk about at least one other position. You can start kind of figuring this stuff out yourself, though, if you know the five cage shapes. But I'm going to talk about at least one other position on the fretboard. Um, but then I'm going to start talking about all kinds of other stuff, all kinds of other ideas. Um, I expect this to run maybe 10 parts or so. I don't know exactly how long it's going to run. But I got a lot of stuff to talk about with this chord tone stuff. So stay tuned for more, and if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Thanks a lot.